Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. It's Greg at Money Vikings Investing. And again, we do investing, health, and collectibles, all things true wealth. So thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate it. I think we have a very informative and special one today. We're gonna to talk about if housing has destroyed the American dream. We're gonna dive into the numbers, uh, see how people are faring, and get a sense of some strategies and a way ahead because it is serious out there and people are struggling, especially uh, in the younger age brackets. So we'll talk about that today. But uh, would appreciate if you liked and subscribe as we grow the channel. Again, it's everything investing, health, and true wealth. Uh, that includes art and collectibles, and we intend to continue to add value to your life. So with that, let's dive right into it. Did housing destroy the American dream? You can check out an article on this that I put together at truewealth.moneyvikings.com if you want to do more of a deep dive. But uh, let's get into it here. So let me say this first. I love the United States of America. Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect, but we are pretty darn good. And we're always trying to improve the American dream. And I believe also as I'm getting older and have been investing for so many years that we are also reshaping and remaking what it means to achieve the American dream. So it used to be, you know, the house in the suburbs, two cars, two children, uh, 30 years of working at the same company, and you retire and play golf on a pension. We all know that that is a fantasy now. That is not reality for most people. So we need to remake the American dream. It, I, this is not doom and gloom. I do not believe that all hope is lost because it's not. I believe that the United States of America and North America have a very bright future ahead. Uh, yes, we have challenges. We will have challenges. But if you travel the world, if you study other countries, you'll realize that we are doing pretty darn well and we should be a little more optimistic at times. We need to face our challenges and we have many of them. So I'm not saying that we can shy away from all that and it's no time to be complacent. But at the same time, I do believe we have a bright future. So <clears throat> the American dream may not be dead, but I think it needs to be defined given today's realities. And let's get into those. So the bottom line from a real estate perspective is that homes have become less affordable. In 1960, approximately 68 out of 100 Americans, so almost 70%, could afford a home. But now only about 43 out of 100 Americans can afford a home. That to me seems like a big problem for the middle class. Um, this marks the highest debt to income ratio since 2007, meaning that the market is the least affordable for Americans in nearly two decades. The lack of affordability is widespread across the country with prices rising about 98% of counties uh, compared to historical averages. <clears throat> so there's a few reasons why housing has become so expensive in the United States. Um, number one, the low interest rates for so many years, that did affect home prices. It becomes more affordable for people to borrow money and buy a home, and this increases demand for housing, which drove up prices. In addition, low inventory, the number of homes for sale has been declining in recent years, and this is due to a number of factors, including the slow pace of new construction and the increasing popularity of home ownership. The third thing I'll mention is investor demand. So, you know, I don't think as many investors were in the game back then, but they are now and they're buying up homes and so is Wall Street. They're, Wall Street's also buying up homes. And this is really affecting the uh, home, home ownership capabilities for many people. The fourth thing I'll mention is rising construction costs. We know that the costs of all kinds of things, just like inflation, have gone up. And we'll also talk about changing demographics. So, you know, the millennials and seniors are entering the housing market or continue to be part, a big part of the housing market. And they're huge generations. So this increases the demand for housing and there just simply isn't enough supply. So these are a few of the reasons why housing is so expensive in the United States. Um, you know, there's also, you could talk about government policies such as zoning, et cetera. You can talk about technological changes. That's having uh, a change in home ownership and the value of a home, you know, the rise of remote work, which seems to be changing now. Um, and also you can talk about globalization, so a global demand. But the bottom line is that housing, rising housing costs is a significant problem for many people in the United States. It's making it harder for people to afford and buy a home. So what are we to do? I think number one, we should redefine the American dream. I'm not the first to say this, but it appears that younger generations are redefining what the American dream is and means to them. 
And after many years of studying personal finance and being, you know, having my own true wealth journey, this ultimately needs to be defined by each individual and family. And it appears this is especially true for housing and home ownership. Let's face it, it's our biggest cost and it's typically our biggest investment. So one thing is to talk about a modest home. You know, maybe we need to get away from the lifestyles of the rich and famous and the Kardashian type stuff. It's just really out of reach and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Perhaps we need to redefine, uh, maybe make it trendy to have an, an imperfect home. You know, maybe a home that isn't perfect and maybe even a smaller home, you know, maybe that's okay as well. You know, at one time, the average family of four had a house that was 1,400 square feet. That, aver that average probably approaches over 2,000 square feet nowadays. And what do we do with that extra square footage? Well, we basically, you know, put a lot of extra stuff in it. So there's some basic ingredients here. I think the American dream used to be home ownership, a couple cars, a couple kids, a steady job, and after 30 years of working, a relaxing retirement. But there is this problem. Since 2000, broadly speaking, prices have risen 74%. Housing has increased broadly by close to 70%. Child care is up 110%. College tuition up approximately 175%. So you can see anyone who did child rearing, home buying, education in like the 80s or the 90s and before had a much better cost of those things than anyone that was doing it since 2000 that was child rearing, buying homes. And that's why we talk a lot about Gen X uh, and millennial type financial situations. All that stuff has gone up exponentially for these generations in the last 22 plus years and counting. So. The American dream, it still costs a lot of money and salaries just simply haven't kept up. I got a nice chart here that I'd like to talk about that shows, uh, you know, and please go to the source, but there's a nice chart here that shows the uh, rise in uh, different things versus inflation. So there's other ways to, to invest in real estate, of course. See some of our other videos. I talk about REITs versus private real estate, which is better. But at the end of the day, I'm an optimist by nature. So this is not doom and gloom. Let's be honest, the American dream has never really been easy or a cookie cutter type of thing. We do still live in a land of opportunity, but each person's path will look a little different. I still believe in the fundamentals of the American dream and wealth building. Steady employment is something we can tolerate, uh, in something we can tolerate, paying ourselves first and straightforward investing. If you get those three ingredients right, you're probably off to a really good start. And over the decades, that's really gonna compound. But I ask you, leave in the comments, what's your definition of the American dream? I really wanna know, what is your new definition of the American dream? I talk about a Money Vikings true wealth vision, and I put it up on, on our blog, truewealth.moneyvikings.com. Uh, but you know, it's exploring opportunities to better yourself and your family, focus on improving health and learning, applying new knowledge to improve finances, relationships, and wealth building, and be a stakeholder in something in society, some aspect of society. REITs, a small business, a modest home, owning index funds that own the whole market. Be a member of society that tries to add value to others' lives. Be an informed citizen that seeks compromise and pragmatic approaches. Maybe this is the new American dream. I don't know. What do you guys think? Tell me about it. I'd like to hear. Thanks a lot. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, hitting that bell and all that great stuff. Take care. Bye.